like I said to you earlier, it's, it's, you, you, you become a feeding trough <laughs> for, for, for whoever's loosing off you, you know, what, whatever they're called, demons, microbes. <laughs> Well, all the doors to get in are on the other side because it's not the Great Wall of China, it's the Great Wall of Tartaria. So you've got free masonry to put people in. So there's a lot of talk, that's where the word comes from, Freemasons. But we're at a time where people are starting to question things. Rog, how are you, dear sir? Not so bad, friend. Not so bad. <laughs> how about yourself, Chris? Yes, mate. It's been too long. It's been too long. I should probably um, explain for our friends at home that we met through the Wonderful Jimmy James Harris, rest in peace. Jimmy had appeared on Sean Atwood's uh, podcast and made quite a big, big hit. Uh, Jim had spent a few years in prison and he, for some sort of minor hijinks. Yeah, <laughs> minor, minor hijinks, can we say? Yeah. And it, and it, yeah. and it kind of transpired that he was a an intellectual savant. Savant, Absolutely. Savant, a uh, very, very, very clever man, had an incredible podcast. And just as I was getting to know Jimmy, his life took a bit of a downturn. And the, the next thing we knew, he'd taken his own life, Roger. Sadly. Look, yeah. Yes, yeah. Look, looking yeah. to the positive, we we met on a night, we all met on a night out, didn't we? And it was an yeah. incredible night. It, and, it, was a good, it was good fun. Yeah. <laughs> And you like make it always was around Jimmy's place, you know. It's it was it was um you, you're gonna get some extra, you know, and 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 I didn't know I was gonna meet you. You you were the, my extra that night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pleased to help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I remember we 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 had a uh, bit of a night out, didn't we? And we were chatting a yeah. lot, and um it transpired that our our sort of understanding of the planet or the universe was uh, similar although <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first to say you you've probably got a lot more a lot more knowledge than me oh i, I don't know because because no one knows what what knowledge anyone else has got you know i i do know a hell of a lot but but the but but it's it's, it's that cliche and old thing the more you know you realise I, I absolutely don't know fuck all really. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> and that is a place I, we want to get to, though, isn't yeah. it? Where yeah, you know, I mean, where... I've always I've always tried to look at uh, there's there's a there's a brilliant there's a brilliant phrase. It's it's I don't know if it's old English, but it's a really hard word to go and find out. You can you can find it on the internet, but it's called the word is called qua qua versal. So it's q u a q u a V E R S A L quaquaversal. And it means it means looking in all directions at once. So you're looking at 360 degrees at once. And 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 the and the opposite word to that is centroclinical, which is which is um you've got blinkers on, you just you just look in that way, you know. And and people come to you and say, um, oh yeah, I'm really proud of myself. I've got a degree. I've got I've got one degree. From university yeah <laughs> and, and i think you got one degree have you oh good on you well done well done you know because there's it's um, i always say it's there's 360 degrees in a circle you know <laughs> just saying <laughs> so i so i try and look at everything you know there's, there's there's a few things i don't look at um like classical music i've just got absolutely no interest in it or, or ballet uh, yeah, well, not all classical. This is some classical music, I don't, which is all right, and uh, and 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 sport. You know, um, when I used to play sport, I loved it. I loved all sports when I could run around and kick a ball. And the, the minute minute um, uh, injury sort of stopped me from doing any of that. Uh, my interest in all the football, rugby, 
Olympics just went out the window. Just, just weren't interested anymore, you know. And then, and then you find out all the shenanigans with, with all these, all these organised sports as well. You know, anything organised, organised religions and organised sports, <laughs> you got, you got to keep half an eye on them. <laughs> Mate, you said it, and um, those two words you described sounds like being in the matrix and being out the matrix. Really, yeah, yeah. Because really, really. they want you centre clinical. They want to get. They want you to have your little degree because you'll be you'll be um, bragging about that for the rest of your life. Oh, I've got a degree. You know. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Crack on. You know, I've got a square satanic thing on my head. You know that they make you wear. <laughs> You got a, squ- a black square on your head. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason why they put that on your head because <laughs> you've got one degree <laughs> of knowledge, and you've been compartmentalised. And uh, we've got you where we want you. You know, maybe, maybe you're 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 that enthusiastic. You might do another degree. You know, still just two, <laughs> or you might get a master degree. You'll know a little bit extra on the one degree that you have got. Well done. <laughs> And it's give me a dustbin man who's who's looked at everything. Give me a hospital port or anyone you know who's, who's looked at everything. You know, so so I'm I'm very wary around people who have got degrees because because usually they haven't got much to say about anything. Although well they have, <laughs> they've got a lot to say about stuff that they have no idea what they're talking about. You know. Anyway, anyway, I'll shut up about those people. Well done for you. All of you got a degree. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it's a great, Roger's a great point because, um, oh my God, you, you have to come quite a certain way and have an interest in, in understanding this stuff to see how much the education system has been infiltrated. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they always say follow the money, don't they? And the, and the education system uh, goes way back to the Rockefellers back in the I think twenties, thirties, mm. something like that. But they wrote the blue they, they wrote the blueprint for um, for the education we've got now back in those days. Yeah, those. yeah. <laughs> I mean, just to give our friends at home an example, anyone that knows me will know the bit. You know, one of the biggest things in my life, the first thing I teach people in life coaching is understand your body's ph balance you know that we're a living organism this is so crucial and yet you ask any doctor nurse social worker youth worker that was what my my degree was in was in youth but you you ask them about that and you're just going to be met with a blank stare oh, yeah, like they, what, they have no idea what yeah. are you talking about and yet something that is so essential to understanding our existence as as whatever we are yeah. primates human beings is being com- conveniently you know sidelined in the old education um and if that's been sidelined <laughs> the thing that <laughs> stops us getting ill uh, what the hell else you know what the hell else has hey yeah yeah well, we we know that big pharma is is I mean, healthy people is you don't make money out of that, so you got to keep everyone, uh, you know, extremely unhealthy, and 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 then they get hand over fist money. It's as simple as that, and it's just money making. Mm. But also lucian, you know, getting the loose off off people because because if you're ill, you're not that happy most of the time. So, yeah, loose is a, a concept that's just coming, or it's certainly a word that's just coming into public knowledge or for those that seek (laughs) seek knowledge Mm -hmm. um and it's this uh, um concept of uh, harvesting energy energy from people isn't it like something we can't see is benefiting from our our misfortune and our depression and our and our worry and anything to do with fear so you got you got fear and love haven't you uh, it's, it's 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 never love and hate because hate's just a, an attribute of fear so i always say it's love and fear and so you got to try and live your life in love and and try and avoid fear because then they loose they they yeah. loose that and and 
like I said to you earlier, it's, it's, you, you, you become a feeding trough <laughs> for, for, for whoever's loosing off you, you know, what, whatever they're called, demons, microbes, whatever they're called. And it makes sense that these things do exist in, in, in this area we can't see, just in another dimension. There's plenty of people who can see them. You know, there's plenty of people who come out of the woodwork and say, yeah, I see these things all the time, you know, around, you know, we all, we've all got the ability apparently, but um, I certainly haven't got any of that sort of psychic ability whatsoever. <laughs> well, taking it to a simpler level, if you look at the um, spiritual journey or the spiritual state, rather, love is the highest form of uh, yeah. vibration and frequency. Exactly. Yeah. And if you look at the works of like Tesla and Einstein, etc., they said, if you want to understand life, you've got to understand energy, yeah. vibration and frequency. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Let's go back a bit to the beginning, Rog. Um, and can I just say you've got the like the best backdrop of anyone we've ever had on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was a photograph, folks. <laughs> Um, I, but it's, it's only there because because years ago I I old, I've always wanted oak floors in my house and and um and I my, my Tracy my wife she she uh, left me to do the ordering of the oak and and so I measured up and I ordered the oak and um, when I laid all the floors there was there were still piles and piles and piles of planks in the in the garden oh shit I've ordered too much I've ordered too many too many planks you know of, of oak. And so what, what do I do with it? So it's like I build a bookshelf and what have you. And, and in fact, the whole house is, is skirting boards, everything. And I had to hand saw the tongue and groove off every bloody <laughs> plank of wood. <laughs> that, that weren't very nice. <laughs> Rog, let's just go back a bit because we, we're at a seminal time in life. Just, i just give a silly example, but... Um, the king's coronation clearly didn't get the numbers that in the old, you know, it days of like the, that, yeah. the empire, yeah. everyone. And you saw people cancelling street parties, cancelling get togethers because, because there, there wasn't the interest, not, not, I mean, not just in this particular king. And let's say they've got some fairly dubious connections, haven't they? You know, we're, we're, if I say now, then now, then owls, <laughs> owls, owls about that, then you know this. There's a lot of stuff that that really hasn't been explained. Yeah. But but we're at a time where people are starting to question things. I and think what, you're right, Chris. I think there's a hell of a lot more people who who are um, you know, like you said, questioning this, that, and the other about them. You know, what's his brother Andrew? You know, he's he's um, his mother paid him paid off for him to to be you know paid someone who's accusing him of something millions of pounds. He's, that's, you think, well, didn't she just buy you know buy off the law? You know, by 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 law, should, should, he he should be um, going to court and 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 but but someone with so much money has just bought someone's freedom you know mm. and that's to me that's just blazingly obvious and and um and so many people don't really see it but but going back to what you said it is so many people are seeing it <laughs> i i just haven't felt any buzz about the coronation around where i live you know even even in the community um club that i go to they, they put some bunting up just to put some bunting up and and m most of the people were, were saying what are you doing that for you know oh it's a load of old rubbish you know and that was the majority view of, of the bunting going up and it was it was just a backwards and forth oh don't be so miserable you know <laughs> but there was no there's no this lovely community coming together and <laughs> oh the king the king yeah none of that none of that at all <laughs> i'll come back to what i was going to ask you but just as an aside on that matter it, it you know people can live their lives how how they want i i i wouldn't judge anyone exactly yeah but what what i would say is you know if you do want the spiritual pathway friends you do have a conundrum there you know mm, mm. if you give your power out to for example an established family because they were born into 
you know this role and i'm not not here to criticize not at all no, you no. can't then say yeah but i also want to be spiritually enlightened it, it because the enlightenment aspect means understanding the concept that we are all one, that we're the universe um, yeah. manifested to experience itself. Yeah. And in, and by giving your power away to another entity by like, we are not worthy. We are not worthy. And that's fine. I, I get it. You know, I completely get, I mean, I grew up in, in England. I grew up in Britain. I'm just chucking that in for those people that are starting to make the connections, Rod, you know, but what, what I wanted to ask you was what awakened you? What, what, because I think, I think we're born free. We're born in light. You, you see kids playing, they're living in the moment, aren't they? They're yeah. in pure beauty. They, all they care about is like, you know, they're playing in the sandbox, pass me that toy, the dirty. And you have to go, Oi, Tyler, <laughs> Come on, it's time yeah. for your tea now. And they're like, and, and they're literally physically shook out of it because they've yeah. been so much in, in what's now referred to as um, uh, presence. Um, yeah. Living in the in, present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In meditation, yeah. they call yeah. it mindfulness, don't they? That that yeah. That beautiful, natural state of human being where so long as there's not a predator coming to eat you, you live in... You know, you're hunting, you're gathering, da 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 da. Bear in mind that that beautiful state doesn't last. We get put into school where the where the indoctrination starts and when the fear starts that you're not good enough, you're not as good as that guy on that table. Oh, I mean, literally, at one of my schools, we were positioned in the class in relation to how smart we were on oh, the old 11 really? plus exam. Oh, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> so everybody knew that that poor chap over there on yeah. table one, position on one was yeah. the yeah. quote unquote thickest guy in the class. Yeah. And this guy up here, who's on the top, te he's the quote unquote smartest. Wow. I've guy. never heard of that one. Whoa, oh. whoa, how cruel is that? <laughs> well, there was a lot of cruel stuff that went course, on uh, yeah, in, yeah, in, in, yeah. in during during the, the, the 70s and, and, and the like. There was a lot of sort of you know, bigoted ideas and um, a, a lot of abuse that was just accepted as normal. In the 70s, I was in a village and, and we all the kids would just go out into the fields and play. Yeah, and run around, and uh, it was in a, in a little gang, you know, all different ages, just running around. And and our parents would always always say, "Beware of Alan." And and there's this this there was this bloke who lived in the village, and he would he would go go around the countryside and and um, well, flash or, or or take all his all his clothes off and run around the fields naked. I'll tell you another one. This 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 reminds me of what my granddad told me. He he was he was um, he was on the he was on he used to stoke the fires on the on the locomotives during the war. So he was never he wasn't allowed to go into it, you know he couldn't be called up because he had a, he had an important job. Yeah, yeah, and. and um, and he said, he's, 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 and yeah, like like a lot of them in those days, it was you know dig for victory, wouldn't it? So they all have their little allotments and what have you. And he he said some pastor was nicking our um, peas on our allotment, and so so him and a, him, him and a few other fellas would um, kipped out in the shed, keeping an eye on their allotment patch to see who this sod was who was who was nicking their stuff. And he said, and we got him. And and he he came in and and he, he was he started picking the peas off our you know, off, off the, off the plant. And we, we opened up the shed and we dived on him and, 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 and we uh, frog marched him to the cop shop, you know, and, and uh, got him sorted out. You know, he's a wrong one. And, and he said, he said, he, 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 yeah, we, we knew who he was. He, he, he had six daughters and, and, and um, he used to, our Andrew, he, he used to have sex with them all. He wasn't a very nice man. He used to have sex with all his daughters. And I said to him, well, why didn't you frog march him off to the cop shop for for um, what he's doing to his daughters? And he said, none of our business. What he does with his own children, none of our business. <laughs> but he was nicking our peas. <laughs> it really was weird back then. It was more of a shame. Yeah. But like the to be exposed in public than mm. it was what you were bloody doing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is why... <laughs> wives at the time would just they knew what was going on but oh, the, sure. the, yeah. the the shame of of being found out meant that they 
they kept it going on the kids rather than expose um for sure yeah the, the, the adults but yeah, going back to my original question rog what what woke you up then what how how did you start to see through this complex matrix well, um, of, of lies and twisted media and and I, narratives i think I, th I think from a very young age i never fit, fitted in anywhere as a, as a kid uh, I'd, I'd see other lads running around the playground what have you and 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 it always seemed to be they knew how to be a lad <laughs> they knew how to kick a ball they knew they knew stuff they knew how to do this they knew how to do that and and, and i didn't so, so i was always always observed yeah, uh, and and thought right. Yeah, I think I got the handle of that. Yeah, I go and, I go and play football. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. You know, it didn't. Nothing came naturally to me, so I had to observe it, and then and then I could I could quite easily um, get my head round it and sort it out. So so I was always a little bit on the on the sidelines, looking in. You know, waiting for my my entrance into once I once I've sort of sussed it all out. Yeah, I know what. Yeah, in that situation, you do this. Uh, okay, I get it. And and growing up through school, I I, I just I just thought, how do you know what you're telling me is true? I'm always having these questions, you know. But but I was I was, I was never I was never one of these. Who go, why sir? Why sir? You know, like I, I just wanted to keep my head down, you know, because half the time I didn't understand what they were saying anyway. And you think, well, well, how do you know that person did that? And I'd, it was it was it was questioning, you know. And and again, I I I've got no qualifications, but I've I've. I've taught in a, I've taught degree at a university. So I used to be a university lecturer. I've got no qualifications, but they got me in because I sort of you know knew what I was doing. <laughs> I don't think that happens now. There's no way you can go to a university without a qualification. But um, so so I was always a bit questioning, but but I, I was always up for fun and 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 um, and what have you. And it was it was um, I. I I was always buying little books on on um, uh, the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, stuff like that, those little books, you know, the, the, the bloodline of Jesus and all this sort of business. So I, I used to read those quite a lot and, and things similar. Always had an interest in 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 um, UFOs and what have you. Didn't believe in any of it, just, just had an open mind, basically. I had an open mind to everything, you know. And... And I'd be the first to take the piss out of anyone who, who reckoned they saw a ghost or a UFO. And I, yeah, I just joined in, did all that. But I always thought, well, maybe they did. And then, then, then years later, still reading all these odd little books and what have you, and, and going to lectures and so, having having no idea. Of, well, it was then that we we knew that the the organisation of Big Pharma was um, how would we say um, not as everyone thinks it is. Mm. <laughs> It's 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 um, not playing ball as you would imagine it would do, uh, and um, and we thought, Christ, you know, that is a big organisation worldwide, and and it's not as you think it is. And then it was a few years later we watched we watched a documentary series called Zeitgeist, both me and Tracy, my wife, we watched that and we watched the first episode, and it, it was like a smack in the face of, of oh Christ. Everything is like that big pharma. It's not how you think it is. Everything, everything, every possible, every military, pol political, every every corporation, everything in the world, every organization, every religion, is not what it seems. It's not how I've been told. You know, it's it's it's, it's and it was like a smack in the face, and and that was about um, oh, 2012. That was 2012. So it was a big sort of smack. It was, it was as if before then, it was as if you imagine a lake and there's a footpath around the lake. So, so as, as co we were constantly sort of walking around the lake, looking in, you know, but not actually diving in. Sort of, oh, there's all the nice birds on the lake and what have you, and they fly away, you know, and so forth. And then on this one moment, we just ah, fuck it, poof, dived in the lake, and, and that's what it was. That was our that was our what, 2012. That was the trigger. These zeitgeist. Uh, documentaries that triggered us into, oh christ you know nothing's no, nothing in this world is as is as it seems and um yeah so that was that was the point and and from then we devoured every every subject we researched every subject we get our teeth into and going back to jimmy um uh it was it was a few years back and and i went round his flat and and he's and he's, he said rog 
of, of uh, you heard of Tartaria? And I said, I haven't got, no, never heard of that term. Like, I've heard of tartar sauce and tartars, you know, and what have you, but not Tartaria. I said, what's all that? He, he said, mate, you're going to, you're going to shit your pants. He, 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 he said, we both thought we'd 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 look to everything, you know, even 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 a cursory look. We, we we there was nothing we'd we'd not we because because me and Jimmy we we talked endlessly about all the all the or or have you researched this? Have you yeah yeah I have. have you, no, I haven't done that one, you know. And then you go off and do it. And between us, the 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 the, the level of stuff that we'd looked at was was immense. And he just picked me up one day and, and said. No Tartaria in a Welsh accent, which I'm not going to do. He just said, "No Tartaria is going to is going to blow your mind. You're going to piss yourself." You know, we're not. We're not uh, and then he then he spent an hour just telling me about stuff. I was going, "What the? F- no way! No, no!" <laughs> and of course that that just set me off because because I, I I never just take anything from anybody because I, I I like to do my own research and so that just set me off for months. I, and and the whole concept of the Tartarian thing is so deep and so complex and so, I mean, it touches on so many subjects. It was it was like, whoa! How did how did I miss this one? <laughs> you think, so Rod, oh. you're going to have to give us an in in insight because it's even something I'm familiar. Well, very, very, does it does it go back to the ancient bloodlines? Uh, it might do, but the the main th- the main thing about um, Tartaria, you got a map behind your head, and where it says Russia, yeah, all that would be Tartaria. <laughs> That's it. Okay. The bits USA, Brazil, that'll be Tartaria. Australia, Tartaria. Britain, Europe, Tartaria. It was the biggest empire on the planet, and it's been completely eradicated from our history. Yet there is there is so much absolute hard evidence to say it existed. Even even just going back to the, to old maps, just going back a couple of hundred years ago, Tartaria is over all the maps. It's, they've got their flag, everything. You know, it's <coughs> and Tartaria was was supposed to be this beautiful empire where the four races, your blacks, your whites, your reds, and your yellows, all happily live together everywhere. All over Africa, you had you had white people, black people, yellow people, all over Africa, and mm-hmm. and um, you had these Tartarian buildings that they call Greco-Roman now, and it's got there's no evidence that the the Greeks or the Romans ever built any of these buildings. There's no real evidence, but these buildings are everywhere. They're in Hawaii, they're in Japan, they're in London, they're in Australia. Before the convicts went there, there were massive big cities of these gorgeous buildings that we all know and 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 um see you know uh, and it's funny because once you once you get a handle on learning this stuff then you go to your own town or your own village and you see tartarian buildings and you think those the empire was here that is in my country it was in australia it was in south america it was in it was in, it was in the usa and everything we've been told like the usa cowboys and indians bullshit it's rubbish it's made up there's no evidence for it. <laughs> more, more, more cowboys and Indians have been shot on, on films <clears throat> than ever, ever happened in America. And they don't tell you about the um, the white race who lived in the in America when the founding fathers came or Columbus, whoever it was, discovered America. If you think of Budapest, the beautiful buildings in Budapest, mm. there's buildings all over America, all over South America. Of that ilk, the same buildings, same like the town hall. And they say, oh, they, they were all built in the Victorian times. But there's been so many researchers around the world who have, who have looked into the history of, of, of Victorian times. They, well, where's the quarries? Where did they get this stone from? There was no quarries in those days. <laughs> to build all these great big buildings, you need big quarries. And there weren't any running of, of that ilk in those days. You know, <clears throat> another example, the Great Wall of China. Well, all the doors open the other side. So, so, so if you want to get into the wall, into the into inside it, and get up onto the ramparts, what have you? Well, all the doors to get in are on the other side because it's not the Great Wall of China; it's the Great Wall of Tartaria, <laughs> <coughs> and it's not that old because on the old maps, the big old Wall of China or or Tartaria, whatever you want, to, isn't on it. And you see the old maps, Rome. <coughs> hasn't got a big city status it's it's just like a little town you think whoa hang on a minute you know i thought rome was this big thing and 
<coughs> and then you find out um, the Dark Ages, that first thousand years after Christ, that first thousand years didn't exist. So they just made it up. And and so, um, you know, so, so when I was born, um, 1965 ought to be 900 and 65 because they've added a thousand years on and then you go to the old churches and you see that one isn't actually a one it's a j or an i which is j for jesus and i it's another it's another word for jesus you know so it's i um when i was born you know um 965 but but if you go into old churches you'll see that's that's not a number one it's either a j or an i <laughs> and they've just made up a thousand years of bullshit. And then you, the, the more you look into this, and you think, well, hang on a minute. So maybe the Battle of Hastings never happened. And, and you look into that, and there's no evidence. They don't know where it happened. There's no, there's no archaeological evidence of any Battle of Hastings. And then you think, well, then maybe we weren't overrun by the Normans. Then maybe, maybe um, it was the other way round. And, and usually, a lot of the things you find are the other way round. You know, um, the French language probably comes from the English language, not the other way around. Not because we are supposedly been invaded by the Normans that brought the French language in. Well, possibly it's the other way around, because in these days you had Tartaria and people flew around on, um, on, on airships all over the shop and, and used the top of um, churches and cathedrals as stopping points. So you'd stop off at the top of a cathedral uh, spire or or, or um, rampart, and you'd it was like a it was like a um, uh, an airship station. We come down, and then you catch the airship and go off somewhere else by climbing up the. And they and you find out that churches and cathedrals were not places of worship. They were they were machines. They were devices to to harness free energy. And and in the stonework, you've got all these rods that are built into the stonework and all, on all the shapes of the windows, all these cymatic shapes and patterns and symmetry that 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 um that supposedly send out good energy to to the the, the um the local areas. Because have you ever noticed when you go around Britain and you see a, a, a really lovely built church in the middle of nowhere? There's no there's no big village around it, or or if or, or maybe just a few houses, but they've got a bloody church there. You know, you think, well, there's not enough people to go there to, to go, go and worship because they were not places of worship. They were they were places of people would go there to, to build up their their organ energy. Hence, you're playing an organ <laughs> for the sound frequency and blah, 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 da, 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 and, and you feel good. And, 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 then, and then those uh, frequency waves would go into the land and make the crops grow well. But the people who destroyed the Tartarians brought in um religions because before religions every everyone everyone was spiritual so it was it was you and god and so you might have had a, an islamic tradition of that or a christian tradition of that you know and and often these church old old drawings of these churches you, you'd have the crescent thingy of the, the muslim crescent the islamic crescent alongside the cross symbolizing the christian one and it was all chapters of the same book it was, it was all spiritual chapter of the same book, but the, the, but the, uh, the, the, um, the parasite that came in and destroyed the Tartarians and made the world like it is now had to divide everybody up and have everyone at each other's throats because of the Lucian. you got, you got some people to feed up here. So we can't have this lovely utopian world of Tartaria where there was no, no one killing anyone and everyone lived happily together living in beautiful buildings. You know, there's even talk that, that, um, in Tartaria, perhaps people didn't eat so much as well because in these great big buildings, there's 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 no there's no um, there's no toilets or plumbing, <laughs> and so they th th there's a lot of um, supposition that well maybe the Tartarians didn't eat so much you know maybe they just lived on 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 the free energy the air you know around and they got all their sustenance that way and maybe picked a few fruit every now and again. <coughs> So Tartaria takes you into into whole sorts of subjects like mud floods. Why 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 are some buildings um, cut off underground? You know, and if you if you do digging up under the ground, that building carries on. You know, so so what happened there? <laughs> and so there's this there's this th um, theory of these resets. These mud floods would come in, flooding up all over the shop, and and burying everything, and and killing a lot of people, and then you reset. 
and the, and the old photographs of empty cities all around the world, Moscow and, and uh, Paris and what have you, big empty cities. Weirdly, with with these are old photographs from over 150 years ago, but but it's got got HD quality to it. So you can, when, when they're on the screen, you can you can zoom zoom in and, and have a trip around these empty cities, and you think, well, well the, the the photography in the 70s was shite. So how come 150 years ago you've got you know, high definition photography, obviously from someone up in a, a balloon, you know, taking these photographs. And that's why you got the um, the the, uh, the zeppelin was had to be brought down and, and set on fire because oh no you can't go travelling balloons because because they're dangerous you know so we'll we'll fill this one with with whatever is it hydrogen that's that's um, flammable and let's hydrogen or, he, or helium was it helium it, yeah helium yeah yeah some of those burns and and so we will fill it with that instead <laughs> and then we'll burn the bastard down it'll be it'd make headline news all around the world. And off you go. We've got our we've got our thing, and and yeah. So, so Tartaria sends you into so many different. Um, oh, so so when you got so when you got these empty cities, uh, um, another uh, you've got all these beautiful buildings, fantastic buildings, you know, gorgeous. We're, we're hand machinery, you know, machinery um, that you plug in it was only only brought into the world in 1958. You know, machine tools. So how how did they build those buildings? I've 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 spoken to builders and said, well, how'd you go around doing that? And they, and they always say, I've absolutely no idea, mate. We couldn't build that sort of stuff now, you know. But you'd have to have, but to get that all that carving and stuff, you'd have hand tools. There's no way someone's chipping away at that stuff. They said they're molds, or or or, 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 or you'd have. There's no way a, a, a stonemason would chip out all those carvings on that just that one building alone. That would take. 50 years and if you fuck up you'd have to start again you know and if you've ever done any carving chris you know that oh shit you know i've just bashed it a bit too hard there oh fuck it so so how come you get all these beautiful carvings that, that are immaculate you know especially out of marble and so there's this this there's this there's so much evidence oh yeah so going back to the empty cities so what you've got is is masonry and it's free to reset you can put your own. You can put your people in it now. So you've got free masonry to put people in. So there's a lot of talk. That's where the word comes from, Freemasons, because it's not that they were all chippy guys. You know, it's because they destroyed everyone in these big cities, and then they reset them by bringing in new people, their people. You know, and so that was Freemasonry. Now we've got to fill it. We've got rid of everyone. We've killed them somehow. You know, we've kept the children. So then you look into all the orphan trains and all the orphan ships that that took in English people to America, American people to England, and uh, everyone was swapped around. Loads of <coughs> loads of kids farmed off to Australia and so forth. Swap everyone around. Then bring in the education system and tell them a bullshit history that never happened. But that's what you're growing up with. Mm. You know. And 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 you're too young to remember your mum and dad, and so hence you got the Victorian times. How come all the kids were in the factories? <laughs> you know, in, in Oliver Twist and all. How come there's all the kids doing the work? Because there was no bloody adults. Because they killed them all. They reset. They got rid of. They got rid of the adults and reset. And and some people say, well, that's kind of what we're going through now. Is 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 possibly there's going to be a reset. And and uh, all, all the big wigs, you, uh, they're all constantly talking about. Oh, this is the big reset. This is the big reset. But the resets that in the past were these things. You you, you just curl swathes of adults, and you swap all the kids about, and off you go. You start again, and you give them a false history. And uh, and I'm just touching on a little bit of Tartaria. I'm, I'm just trying to fling it at you from lots of different angles. Mm. <laughs> but there's so much to research in it. <laughs> well. The the, uh, the the two things that come to my mind there, one is obviously the, the theory that the Great Pyramids were, were conductors for, for yeah. En en energy, yeah. which is completely hidden from the historic narrative yeah. along with the timeline. Yeah. You no, know, you look at the Sphinx and if, if you go on the the water levels, the erosion from, from, from water, it, it's allegedly clearly 
a lot older than the four thousand years that they that we've been told, or the ten yeah. ten thousand. And then also, I've travelled quite a lot in the Americas, and you have these magnificent structures. Um, um, and no one knows how they were built. Exactly. No one knows exactly. We 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 know they're there, and and we've been told going back to the 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 the, uh, the Giza pyramid. We've been told, oh yeah, it's loads of slaves, and you think, hang on a minute, how how do you feed all these these buggers? You know, uh, mm. and and building these big big things to get it's it's if you just sit down even for five minutes, there's no way a big bunch of slaves, even if you had twice as many as they say they had. And this is going back in the years when, well, there's not many people on the planet, or so we're told, you know, so where do they get all these slaves from? And who's feeding them? Who's, who's farming to give them the food? And what's the... It, it, absolutely none of that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, and and um, uh, engineers all over the world say that we, we couldn't build that pyramid now with, with all the technology we got. There's no way we haven't got the skills to build that pyramid now. We haven't got the machinery. We haven't got the cranes. We haven't got the manpower. We haven't got the first idea of all the bloody how, how do you make all the all the um, corridors and God knows what else inside? And having it line up with stars, it, it's mm. it's impossible to do. Just like just like all the um, uh, controlled demolition guys, you know, say. Well, those twin towers, you know, they, they, nothing crashed into them and brought them down. That was that was controlled demolition, and that's that's right across the board. They all say this, but it won't get into the papers. It won't get into the news. Uh, so, so um, they can say what they want. We can say what we want. You know, it's not going to get to the masses. So you can, they don't care what we say because <laughs> because it ain't going to get out there. You know, and they say, well, you know, it's not on the BBC News. It's not on there, and so that's what you got. And so, yeah, so, so you've got pyramids in China, you've got pyramids under the water in, in, um, you know, in that, in that, uh, was it the Bermuda Triangle, so they say, and, and then in the Crimea, uh, the pyramids everywhere. Who's made them? I have no idea. And, the, and they line up with each other. This is the fascinating yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are they, are they energy points of the, of the planet? Um, just like you get energy points with acupuncture around your body, is, is, are, are they points of, of, who knows? You know mm. what I like is is is, is like Jimmy's um, uh, podcast thing. Everything on the table. You know, to me, obvious education should be we we'll put everything on the table. You know, here's what here's what um, certain scientists and official universities say about something. Here's what other scientists say about something. Here's what researchers say about something. Make your own mind up. Mm. You know, because the, you'll have conflicting stuff. It should be all on the table for a uh, you know someone to, to make their own mind up with you know and um but we're not we're just sold this is this is how it is and and like the theory of evolution I mean, it's it's in the title it's a theory <laughs> so so we're taught that as fact at school but it's not a fact it's a theory and it's an unproven theory there's absolutely no proof of it whatsoever but we're taught it as fact you know, I call it theory tales. You know, they just they just um, tell us a lot of theory tales. You know, and, uh, and make us think of it as fact. <coughs> the, the whole thing Which is a line I've put in, in my book. I've, that's a, that's a line I've got in my book. I, yeah, I've got, quite like that one. When I've thought that one up because it's it is. I, I I like hard scientific facts. You know, and 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 you can get to them because you can do repeatable experiments. Anything else out, outside of that is is a theory. So it's it's like well, a theory uh, is 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 basically guesswork. It might be educated guesswork, but it is guesswork at the end of the day, because it's not a hard scientific fact. So I so Chris, I like hard scientific facts. Anything outside of that is probably a theory. So so then it's questionable. If it's a theory, it's questionable. Yeah, even the theory of evolution, um, which I get, you know, I say from visiting south america again i've never been to galapagos but when you're in that region ecuador you read up a lot on things like darwin and 
Well, he was he was right on two things. You, you've got um, what well, the two things is. Uh, this is where the, the you know I said earlier I can't remember the um, adaptation is one of them and variation adaptation mm. and variation. So you, you'll get a bird in one sort of area and it'll eat something. And if, and if he's over the other side of somewhere else, he might have to grow along the beak to get somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. So he's adapted, you know, or or, or variation. But, but the evolution theory is based on species turning into another species, and there's not one piece of evidence, even Darwin said it on his deathbed, there's not one piece of evidence anywhere on the planet where a species turned into another species. There's nothing. Everything in the fossil record, everything just came fully formed. There was, yes, you've got adaptation or variation on the horse where you had little horses, and over the years they grew big, you know, or spiders were big and then they grew little for whatever reason. They they adapted or there's variation. But a spider didn't turn into a horse. You know, a species did not turn into another species. That, there's there's no evidence anywhere to say that that happened. So so that is just a theory and and, and, a, and not a very good one because there's no evidence for it. But there is evidence that plants and animals have just dropped in out of nowhere, fully formed, and off we go, because there's no, there is, there is not none of that species to species build up of of anything, uh, and that's hard scientific facts. And say, well, well, hang on a minute, then something else is going on here, but it's not, it's not evolution. <laughs> it seems like um, uh, uh, intelligent design. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sort of vaguely, or you know, relatively familiar with all the different arguments well the one thing i would say is when you hear people like um i never get this chap's name right is it nouveau harari the guy that wrote sapiens he's a i've only i'm only vaguely um aware of his name i don't know yeah he's 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 a he's a speaker for the world economic forum right uh well enough enough said there (laughs) yeah he said enough there (laughs) It's when they want you to believe that we we came out the African bowl 80,000 years ago. And it's, it, it's got to be nonsense. Well, there's another thing here. You know, it, it, yeah. if, if, if there is evolution, it would be so infinitesimal, if that's the right, you know, incremental. Yeah. It would be over such a slow period of time. Exactly. We're talking millions upon millions of years yeah. not not 80,000 years that we came out of africa it, it... see this is another thing where do they get these numbers from you know they are literally picked out of the air these numbers uh, i live near avebury and it's and it says when you go to avebury that this is 28,000 years old and you you immediately think well how the, how, how do you know that and and their uh, and their thing is Oh, you're carbon dating because some they found some remnants of a of, of some rabbit or something under one of the stones, and you think, well, hang on a minute. Uh, how do you know the stones were built at the same time that remnants of a bit of rabbit you found? You know, a bit of carbon dating. How did you know the stones were put up at the same time as that rabbit or whatever it was they found? Uh, so that's your first question, uh, and then the second question is 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 um is well, how does carbon dating work? And it and it works rubbish because if you if you if you um if you gave the uh, same thing you found you dug up from from archaeology, um, and you sent it to ten carbon um, dating different companies, you you'd get back you know literally. Uh, 20,000 years of, 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 of differences because it doesn't, there is no such thing as carbon dating. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a fool's dating thing. In fact, in the world, you cannot date anything. You, you cannot date stone, wood, even the wood rings. If, 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 the, if the tree is in an, another part of uh, a, a different area, the rings grow differently as well. So, so you can't even use rings as like, oh, how many rings is how old the tree is? Mm, that's 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 too easy. It's not like that. It, it it you know if you plant one tree over there and plant one tree over there, wait wait fifty odd years, you're going to have different set of ring ring things. So even that's not comprehensive. So so carbon dating, which is what everyone uses, 
but but the carbon dating um, companies they always ask the archaeologists how old do they think it is and weirdly when they get the results back it's it's within a few years of what the archaeologists wanted them to say and so that's how it works and so, and so it's a massive big corrupt thing carbon dating so so when you when, when we realize that carbon dating is is utter bullshit then we realize that every single thing that they've told us about how old summer is is, is is purely just a figure they've picked out of the sky there, there is no hard evidence of, of of anything being as old as any apart from the last hundred years we know that you know granddad died you know such and such a time of day you know there's a few gravestones that's about as best you're going to get because you can't date stone you can't date anything so so the Avebury stones they could be younger than twenty eight thousand years ago they could be millions of years old they might have been they they might have been smooth, you know, utterly smooth things. But over the years, they've been around. You, we, we just don't know. We don't know how old anything is. And so I always get suspicious when 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 these 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 um, experts and these archaeologists. Oh yes, this is eight thousand years old, or this was the such and such, you know, fifty eight million Pleistocene age or whatever. Fucking clue. It's, it really is made up. Sh- <laughs> Well, <laughs> again, we should point out just to add some sort of um, context to this that you know modern day professionals have all come through the university system. Precisely. So, what yeah. do we know there? We know that a they think they're Billy Big Bollocks because they've got a bit of paper, and as yeah. we've ascertained, it doesn't really mean a lot. It just means you're able to, you know read information and and then repeat it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Re- and you're good at remember it's 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 all about yeah. a lot of it is about remembering what you've read and, 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 and passing it back again. You know and that system of indoctrination is so powerful that something simple like your body's pH balance. Yeah. Which I'm a thick ex Marine. I'm having to enlighten people I've worked it out. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. and and, and and then it doesn't become such a stretch, Rog, to think that everything is a massive lie. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's not something I'm going to lose sleep over because... No, we, no. We, we, Again, we, it's something that you can you can have a grin and be like, oh, you buggers, that's another one. <laughs> you know. Rog, I'm and Volcanoes. Conscious- volcanoes, just there's a theory that volcanoes just might be um, the slag heaps from, from, from ancient mining, from maybe off-world or interdimensional beings, you know. I'm not saying it is, but these are possibilities. We know slag heaps warm up inside and then burst every now and again. So who's to say, you know, the, the, the volcanoes aren't slag heaps? You know, it's, just, it's, 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 it's just people having one, one guesswork on something, and that's what you've got to believe in. Mm. Whereas, whereas why, not, why don't we have the... Uh, you know, the, the theory that it's that it's a slag heap you know why don't we have the theory that it is a, a you know a pimple on the planet it's, it's going to burst every now and again you know let's have everything on the table and let people make up their own minds you know mm. treat people with a bit of respect and and um get them to take responsibility for their own they have to think their own knowledge uh, uh, work it out themselves rather than just oh no you know someone in authority has told me so that's what i'm going to believe you know because that's what that's what creates division all around the world, you know. That and the fact that our youth of today, God bless them, are preoccupied in one minute shorts on on YouTube and Facebook and sure, yeah, you know, just endlessly scrolling to see. Oh, look, there's a dog riding on a pig. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a beautiful girl diving into a. A beautiful lake i'd like to do that you know there's no context behind that the, the girl's chronically depressed that the lake's <laughs> actually next to a next to a concrete factory but but yeah. um rog i'm conscious of our time here brother and i i want to um first off congratulate you on being an author thank you um thank you. it's always nice to be in the company of a fellow author exactly <laughs> i know i know what you have to go through to sure. to to get a publication out so 
can you tell us about your graphic novel? And do I say it right? Council yeah, yeah. Ha- House? Council, Council House? House? Yeah, the house is spelt the German way. Yeah. H-A-U-S. And it's, and it's, and it's not your council tax way. It's a, it's like council culture way. Council. Yeah. Council, yeah, so council House. house. Yeah. Council House. But it is a play on the word council house, you know. What, Cause, what's cause the idea? Was, what's the idea behind it? How did you come up with it? And, and what's it about? It was always going to be called, I had a working title called Rough House um, because I quite like the term rough house. And it's just, it's like when you have a bit of a tuffle, you know, with your, with your, your mates and stuff, it's a bit of a rough house. It's, it's not a fight. It's a rough, no one's going to get hurt. It's just rough housing. But then, but then um, I found out there was a band called it and other things were called it. And I thought, oh, you know, I, I, I need something that's, that's um, that no one else has got, you know, but I liked I liked the house thing, you know. The pl- I, I love play on words, and the whole the whole book is is I've played on words and sentences. I I, lo- I love wordplay, so that's in, in interweaved into how the book's written. Um, this 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 uh, wordplay I've got that I've not seen very much anywhere else, um, apart from a couple of authors. Um, uh, so, so I just went through all the all the different things of what has a house on the end of it like doghouse and you know and going going back to the uh the the um the film reservoir dogs uh, I, I like the fact that reservoir dogs means absolutely fuck all it means nothing it's just a catchy catchy uh title for a film it don't mean anything and 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 the title I chose in the end means nothing it, it, it you know you can put meaning onto it but from me it means nothing other, other than when I was going through all the house things, there's council house, and I'm, oh, council house, that sounds good. If I if I changed it to cancel, cancel house, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got some of there. It was it was, it was it was purely that. There's no big deep thoughts on it or anything else. I just like the idea. It sounds like council house, and and so the British will get that, but um, the Americans won't. They all live in uh, the, the the equivalents are called projects and stuff. Um, I had to explain it to an American the other the other week, um, but I just like you know the wordplay. That's all, and the fact that that, that um, it, it, it completely uh, passed me by the fact that we we live in a cancel culture that, that that didn't even enter into into my thoughts when I thought of the title, but but um, having the title and and having the cancel culture, oh nice, that's good. That that that, uh, that, that you know some people might take that of it. But I haven't got anything to, you know. There's no hidden meaning there. There's no secret thing. It's just, it's just a phrase I quite like. <laughs> but other people can chuck whatever they want onto it. But the, um, yeah. So, so you can call it a graphic novel, or you know, I, I like the old traditional. Com- it's a comic book. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a 360 page novel, and I've split it into 15 separate issues. So that's issue one, and then there'll be 14 more after this. But I've got to get people to hear about this one first, and then then when issue two comes out, then all of them will come out on a regular basis, like every couple of months. Bang, 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 bang. But but for the first one, I've got I just got to get people to you know hear about it. You know what it's like. You know, and what what what's it about, mate? What <coughs> give us an idea? What can we expect? It's a, it's a darkly humorous thriller. So, so um, you don't have to be awake or, or be into the truth to enjoy it. But, but there's a hell of a lot of stuff in the truth community in there. Um, my, my, my big hope is it might wake someone up when they, when they read it, because there's, there's a lot to, to investigate in when you read the novel. There's loads to investigate. But you don't have to do any of that. You can just read it as a thriller. And it's a bit of a comedy as well. It's, 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 it's a dark comedy. But it's all about... Um, a, a, a billionaire, a, a very so, so you don't get many main characters who are billionaires, you know, in in the world of fiction because it is fiction. My book's fiction, even though there's some controversial stuff in it, but it is fiction. <laughs> um, it's an imaginative story, you know. Uh, if if you think there's some truths in there, then brilliant, knock yourself out. But that's up to you. But I'm not going to say anything in in there is truthful at all. Um, but this this guy, he's a billionaire. But um, and I've always thought, you know, how how boring billionaires are on the planet. You know, they 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 all they all seem to be the same. They 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 seem to um, uh, 
fit into this mold where you you have to be orange for a start and buy a yacht and and go and live on the med you know in in, in the biggest yacht going and and have a trophy wife maybe you know who's orange looking you know and 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 look look what i've got you know i've got a massive big pile and you know i'm a billionaire i'm a billionaire look you know i i, I wear lots of gold i wear fucking jewelry and shit my billionaire is 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 um uh he he's he made his money on in the art world and he hates conceptual art he absolutely f- hates conceptual art but weirdly what he's done with his money in one respect could be seen as conceptual art um because what he's done is he's he's built 23 pubs in the middle of nowhere uh, all in the scottish highlands so it is somewhere but in that somewhere there's there's loads of middle of nowheres so like you've just come out of the sahara you know you, you're going to be walking for, for wherever and you ain't going to see fuck all for, for days and days and days other than beautiful dunes and mountains and God knows what else. But wouldn't, and it's the old mirage. You, oh, oh, there's a cafe. There's a fucking cafe in the, in the, in the, in the, you know, in the uh, heat waves. I'm gasping. So, so it's, it's just on that little idea because he's got the money. I'm going to build a beautiful pub in the middle of nowhere. And just, just, just because a rambler might be out there really going off on off 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 pieces rambling away and he or she comes across a pub proper pub you go in there and everything's 20p every beer every bit of you know tobacco whatever there's, a, there's always gonna be a roaring fire there's always gonna be good food there's gonna be no tellies or, or games machines you know you have a pool table might have you. it's a lovely little pub really really gorgeous pub and everything's dirt cheap and you've just arrived in heaven, but but when you in, but when you enter, it's like the Wild West fiction. The Wild West is is you you hand in your gun at the at the at the bar, you know. So you hand in any any device you got, you hand it in at the bar, and then you can sit down and have a beer and have you and have a laugh and have some food. Uh, but when you leave, you can have your devices back, and of course they're going to be going fucking hell. I've just been to a pub in the middle of nowhere, and so every, every t- so so of of these pubs, th- three girls run these pubs, but only one pu- pub is open at any one time. So so when when a visitor does turn up after months on end, where they're just sat there, and they're all they're all researchers, they're all they're all you know, they get paid by this rich man just to sit in the pub, keep it going, even though no one turns up, but they spend their time researching, you know finding out the truth on the internet about all sorts of subjects like we all do and lots of your your your, your um uh viewers do and so that's their job they got a brilliant job they're they're in nature you know and every now and again some bugger might turn up for a drink and, and when they leave they got to shut the pub down board it all up take the pub sign down put everything in in in, in the land rover and drive to the next one open that one up and, and carry on again and um and, and the story, it's, it's like uh, the Godfather film meets the with Nail, with Nail and I film. So, the, so you've got the Godfather thing where, where you've got this big international thing going on because the millionaire is involved in, in a big international, I won't tell you what it is, you've got to read the book, but he, he's up to something. He's up to uh, <coughs> sorting out a wrong, if you will, in, in the world on, on the big stage. But he's got the little stage of at home where where um, the the uh, the builders who built his his, his pubs um, over over years uh, out of little bothies and what have you converting them into pubs they they've got a bit greedy and they're trying to blackmail him for some more money so he's got a, he has got a little firm of people you know this this billionaire he's got a firm of people that he that he um, sends off to do stuff for and and they and they go and sort these builders out and what have you. And and then this shenanigans starts happening because these three builders have gone missing, you know, and um, and and they've got friends who who think something's up, and so it's a you got your thriller going, so you got your big thriller and you got your little thriller, and he's got to, he's got to juggle both of them. He's got the, 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 the you know the, in the the more close to home stuff, and his and his his wider thing, and he's and he's um, uh, I, I mean. And I use a lot of lot of things that have happened in my life in the book to 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 um to to set things going, you know. So so they're variations on things that I've I've experienced or someone's told me about. So, like like um my my grandfather, another thing he told me when he was on the I told you earlier he was on the trains. He was a fireman. 
on the trains where, where he, t- he told me a story when I was a little lad. He, he, he's because I said to him, what were you doing in the war? And he said, I was on the trains and he, and he's, 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 and I said, did you see any Germans? And he said, he said, yes, I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, he said, um, we were on the train, we were in a tunnel and we were just coming out of box tunnel in near Bath. And, and, and when we came out of the box tunnel, there was a dog fight above. So, so he said, he said the driver had to put on the brakes and we, we went back into the tunnel for safety because, because if the dog fight was won by the Germans, they, they'd come down and straff the train. So, so we got out of danger and we got back into the tunnel. And so we got out of the, out of the, um, the cockpit or whatever you call it in a train. And we stood at the end of the tunnel, having a fag watching the dog fight. Cause he said they were great fun. And he said, um, and then one of the Misha Smiths got shot down. Uh, just just above our heads and 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 he and he, he, he said that that um that nazi he 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 dived out on his parachute and he landed in the field in front of us and and um and so he, he wrapped up his parachute and, and threw it away and then he came he saw the tunnel and he thought right i'm gonna go and get some safety in the tunnel so this german pilot this luftwaffe pilot was running to the tunnel and my grandpa said, and that's that. That was his big mistake because me and the driver were there. <laughs> and he and he and he said, and I always in, back in those days, everyone had a knife, so I just got my knife out. And when he came into the tunnel, he said, I kept putting it in him, in and out of him until he stopped breathing. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so so I've put that in my book, you know, as, 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 as little things like that. Actually, I, I don't believe one word of my granddad. I think he just made that up. You know, <laughs> it might have been true. But uh, um, he, he was he, he was a rogue back in those days. Everyone told stories, and he 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 weren't short of stories. So so I personally think he made it all that up. You know, he just, he just it, maybe it happened. I don't know, but I don't think it did. <laughs> but but it's just little things like that I've put into my book. You know, st- 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 stuff like that. Um, and Rog, can we pick, folks can get a copy on Amazon? Is that? Is it no? It's you have to go through my website. That's the only. That's the only place you can get it at the moment. Okay. Which is, which so we'll more. we'll put a link for that oh, below yeah. below our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, brother, we could chat for ages, but we're trying to keep our podcast sure. short oh, short sure. these days, just to you know garner people's attention. Yeah. But, um, gosh, there's lo- loads more we can talk about. So please come back on the show. Oh, if you love me, that'd be brilliant, Chris. Thank yeah. you very much. No, no problem, yeah. and. Uh, you know, I hope to get up your way. Give us a shout. You know where we are. Yeah, just yeah. give Facebook me, email me, whatever, and, and we'll go out. Yeah. Brilliant. You can kip over. No worries. <laughs> Rog, it's been a great chat, mate. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, your knowledge is fascinating. And um, Likewise, mate. Likewise. It's yeah. just nice to be able to chat about stuff, isn't it? You know, yeah. don't, we don't yeah. have to, don't have to, believe it all or put all i always say don't put all your chips on one square just stay out i'm on the spiritual battle so i don't really i don't buy into anything these days except Uh, consider everything and 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 just just be be yeah be enjoy and 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 keep try and keep your frequency risen that's all we've got to do yeah (laughs) and help help, help people out when you can you know (laughs) and have a laugh (laughs) <laughs> Rog, stay on the line just so I can thank you properly. But for the purposes of the recording, massive thank you, mate. To all our friends at home, hope you've uh, enjoyed this chat as much as I have. If you can like and subscribe, click the notification bell, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Nicely. Cheers. <laughs>